Joining us now is Roderica Applewhite. She is director of Black Media for the White House. We're, of course, broadcasting live on Facebook and LinkedIn. Roderica, good morning. Good morning. How nice to be with you. Nice good. to be with you, too. Nice to be with you, too. So um, clearly the Black vote is, is critical, the President Biden he said as much himself. But I still have to ask, if reaching African Americans is the goal, why bring this particular station to the White House and, and why do it now? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, of course, it's uh, Black History Month, um, but also it's my job as director of Black Media to make sure that we are highlighting and showcasing Black media at the White House. Um, so that is in terms of booking a lot of officials to come on your programs, as you've all graciously accepted my pitches uh, since I started three months ago, um, but also giving you the opportunity to come here and really have a full showcase of what we of the work that we're doing on behalf of Black Americans every day at the White House. Um, so I'm thinking of today as a, a teach-in of sorts. Like we have um, a phrase we use here as a whole of government approach um, to making sure we're uplifting Black Americans and in doing so, so um, we are showcasing almost every single department here um, um, throughout the course of, of your broadcast today um, to really dictate and spell out every single thing um, um, that President Biden and Vice President Harris um, are prioritizing in this administration to make sure that we're uplifting Black Americans. Um, so we're going beyond just the bigger kind of red meat issues like student debt relief and criminal justice reform, even though we do have officials coming today to speak about both of those things, but also just talking about the minutia but, and, and the things that are big, but maybe don't get as much attention um, that impact uh, the lives of Black Americans every day. So that's what we're hoping to do here. Yeah. Well, I think it's important that, that we understand how government actually works, that, uh, that everybody doesn't have the same job, that, that it's segmented, and, and that um, those, those little things do matter. Um, but, but I think many of us don't know how those things work. And so you know, I think it's it's our job as black media to help our community to kind of understand, uh, you know, those things. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I had the opportunity to do was was to cover the president's visit to Valley Forge right yes. outside of, of Philadelphia. And out of a couple dozen reporters who rode in the president's motorcade, I was the only black journalist there. I saw some other black people, but they all worked for the White House. Mm -hmm. um, is there an absence of, of black media covering the White House and politics? And, and if so, what are you doing to change it? Yeah, um, so I think uh, as any Black person can relate to, especially you know this month of all months, there's still a lot of firsts. There's still a lot of barriers that we are crossing. Um, and so it's part of this White House's priority to make sure that we are featuring and showcasing uh, those voices and those outlets. Um, and so part of the things that we are doing is, is doing days like this, not just in February, but throughout the year to make sure that we're continuing to highlight and showcase the work that's being done. There's obviously plenty to do, not only just in policies that, that fly out of this building every day, but also the representation that we're seeing in press rooms. Um, and so it's on us to make sure we're making doing that outreach to get um, in contact with more black outlets to do that work. Yeah. Um, I, I just think it's interesting when when I look at at politics and who's covering it. Um, to me, it, it shades and colors um, how the stories are written, how the stories are told, what perspective is, is used. How important is it to, to have a black perspective? On yeah, how these stories are told. I think it's absolutely critical. I mean, I think um, there is no room that is is not better served by making sure that everyone in it is is contributing um, their different backgrounds to it. It it, it brings color and depth to um, the efficacy of the policies that are done. Um, you know, you can't think of every single perspective as an individual. So it's really helpful, and it's a priority of, of President Biden, Vice President Harris, to make sure that um, those voices are being highlighted and showcased. Um, and so, uh, you know, in doing so, this president has um, really um, put forward a lot of leaders from a lot of different backgrounds, which you'll see today. Um, and also, um, you know, just make sure that we're continuing to prioritize that. Um, and, you know, I think that's why uh, today's a really good showcase, because you'll see that um, it's not in, in all of the White House officials and the departments that they're coming from, there are, there's not like, um, 
a like black policy person or a black corner of a specific department or agency with um, the way that uh, President Biden, Vice President Harris has really approached um, their agenda um, and, this, and, and the way they execute it through this administration is really thinking of how each individual policy point impacts every demographic. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be seeing that with some of the you know, stats um, and, and programs that are highlighted today. All right. Well, well, we're excited about uh, the opportunity to see that and, and to help explain that, I think, to our audience, um, because I think that's part of our job is to really explain uh, these things and, and, and how government works. Um, you know, when you talk about media, the, the landscape of media is shaky at best. Uh, major media companies are dying. Black media companies are vulnerable. Media mogul Byron Allen recently sued McDonald's to try to get a share of their ad dollars. He lost. So if, if we don't get ad dollars and we don't win lawsuits, what's the Biden administration doing to help black media survive? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. Um, I think so. So, um, and I think uh, other agencies can kind of run through exactly what they're doing. Uh, but on my end, what I'm doing to make sure that we're uplifting uh, black media is really going everywhere, reaching out to all kinds of outlets. Um, so you have more traditional news outlets such as such as yours and, and ones that are very um, ingrained in their community, uh, but also making sure that we're reaching the types of news outlets and sources that people are consuming um, and seeing if we can reach them that way. So we're reaching out to entertainment, we're working with influencers, we're doing, um, we're going on every single platform um, to make sure that we're we're reaching people. So last week, for example, we had Secretary Cardona um, do an Instagram live panel uh, to to reach um, to reach black Americans that are accessing news that way. And so we're we're kind of a, a, a pursuing a multi-pronged approach, approach to make sure that we are highlighting and showcasing the excellent work and the good journalism and reporting that that black outlets are doing. yeah, I, I think we we are absolutely doing a lot of good work. In order for us to continue to do that work, um, we need to be able to survive economically. And I guess that's the question I'm asking is, um, you know, are, are there ways in which the Biden administration is looking at help, helping our uh, outlets to survive, you know, um, in order for us to do that, that, that good work that we do and to do it from a perspective which is unique? Uh, we need to be able to to survive economically. And when big outlets can't do that, uh, it's it's harder for us. So is that something that that you guys are, are looking at? Yeah. And I will um, defer to um, Small Business Administrator Guzman, who can speak a little bit more about the the um, the resources and benefits that exist for small businesses, um, since most uh, radios would fall under that category. But there are absolutely um, I, I think that's probably the best um, angle to um, to make sure that. Um, black radio and black media in general can can stay solvent because it is really important um and also you know it, it's not just the the historical nature of it but it's the fact that you know you're writing about stories and you're reporting stories and news in a way and of communities that might not get looked at in the same way by tra by traditional larger media outlets and also with the voice that can relate that that can make sure your audiences can relate back to it as well so um so yeah that's that's um those resources are something that this White House absolutely prioritizes. How did you come to this to this uh, position and place in, in your own career? Yeah, um, so I've worked um, in the political space for my entire career. Um, I've worked on a lot of campaigns in the past um, and I've always just really had an interest in uh, first political research and, and now um, political communications um, because I grew up in the South. I grew up in a very small town in Georgia um, and I noticed that um, a, a lot of people in my community community didn't really understand um, what the point was of being of staying aware of what government is doing, um, how that is impacting their own lives in day to day. You know, it's not just going and showing up to the ballot box every four years or every two years. It's really paying attention to everything that's happening in your in your community day after day, because if you're not um, aware of those things and if you uh, if you're not paying attention to what's going on around you, um, there are a lot of, you know, uh, countervailing forces that take advantage of that um, and, and, you know, put those people kind of on the chopping block to push their own agenda. So it's really important to make sure that um, uh, that people are aware of what they're doing, um, of, of aware of who they're electing, um, and also, um, you know, just staying aware of, of all of that. And so um, 
I got into communications and I've been interested in the space because I think it's really important that people don't feel like they're talked at, but really communicated to and with. Um, and so that that's what drew me here. Mm -hmm. So you talked initially about politics, about being interested in politics and, and, and working on campaigns. What did you learn from that? Um, what did I learn? Um, you got to smile on that. <laughs> Man, I've worked on campaigns. I, I learned a lot. Uh, crazy um yeah i've learned <laughs> I, i've learned many uh we can trade some more stories after this uh but i think the main thing you know really going back to my point you have to reach people where they are it's not enough to sit there and, and sit in your righteousness and know that you're correct if people can't relate to you or if they don't feel like you have their best interest at heart and so you know there's um as people that are so ingrained in this space it's very easy to sometimes uh feel like everyone should just catch up to where you are um, and that you shouldn't take on the burden of making sure you're walking people through that process in a way that doesn't make them feel, you know, demeaned or, or minimized. And so um, it, if you don't, if you're not doing that adequately, you can't really expect the, the results you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. So how do politics and media, especially black media, uh, what, what is the relationship between the two in your view? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a very key tool for communication. And so if you're not prioritizing those things, um, then you're not going to reach the people that you want to reach. Um, you can't sit back and expect them to just, you know, turn on whatever news outlet that you value. It's about reaching them uh, where they are. And so for me, that relationship is, is really important. I think it also is important to reflect um, in a sense of like personnel being policy. You know, I mean, if you can't say that you're valuing Black Americans and Black people, if you're not actually doing the work to reach the outlets that they trust and also in, in turn uplifting folks that are in the trenches every day uh, doing this for their own communities. You know, you you uh, use use the word a little bit earlier, minutia, right? The the details, the small yeah. things. Um, what I've what I've come to learn about about our people over the course of my lifetime is that we tend to be very bottom line. Like we don't want all the details. Mm -hmm. What's the bottom line? And so um, you know, what's different about working with black media outlets that are speaking to a community that is very bottom line? Yeah, um, I think it means that it's our job to make sure we are clearly spelling out exactly what this administration is doing. Um, and so, you know, at the point of, you know, saying, for example, that President Biden is one of the most consequential um, as far as the agenda that he's delivered, um, at, at, that he promised that he would. He's one of the most consequential uh, presidents um, in in our in our lifetime to really deliver those things for Black Americans. Um, but you know, if you're not spelling out exactly what those things are, it's going to be hard for people to feel like that is actually uh, the case. So that's why, you know, we put together the schedule that we have today to really spell out every single thing, because I feel like a lot of those things are people are things that people might not be paying attention to as much. So politics, it, it determines how fast you can drive, how much of your paycheck you keep, where you go to school, who pays for it, what health care you get, how often you get it, how much it costs. Like there's a lot yeah. uh, to, to this. And it, it determines almost every area of, of our lives. You say you come from a small town where people weren't really concerned about that. Do you think that that kind of um, lack of knowledge of, about these things and, and really, you know, being more consumed with really bottom line, day to day survival? Do you think that that's just small towns in black America? Do you think that that's something that that is kind of pervasive in black communities, whether they're urban or rural, small or big. Yeah, no, I think I think it's something that's pervasive throughout. I mean, and when you think about it, at the end of the day, most people are trying to figure out how to keep a roof over their heads, how yeah. to keep food on their table and how to make it to the next day. And so, you know, I can't really blame them for not consuming the news 24 seven. Um, it's just a matter of making sure that when they do want to do that, however they can get to it, um, that we're communicating that very clearly. And so, you know, and on top of that, I mean, I think everything is more kind of siloed than ever, divisive than ever. And so I can see a, a lot of people feeling like they are checked out from the process or that the process doesn't involve them. And so that's why it's incumbent on us to be really creative about the ways that we're reaching people um, so that, that when they are ready to tune in, um, they can see those things, especially as you know they consider you know what, what uh, programs they want in their communities and, and what things uh, that they're noticing that aren't what needs they're noticing that aren't being met is is there a generational divide on on how black people are consuming media um, because I know that uh, a lot of young people 
are consuming their media maybe from social media mm -hmm. rather than from traditional media outlets. Is is there a generational divide? I think there's that's certainly part of it, but I think just generally, you know, traditional TV newspaper, um, are, it, it's um, I think all generations are, are experiencing just a, a little bit of a disconnect from those things. Um, and, I, and, and, you know, I think it goes back to your point on representation as well. I mean, it, it, people aren't going to feel as maybe connected to um, the, the, the stream of information if they're not seeing people that look like them disseminating it. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, we're trying to make sure at the White House that we're pursuing a really um, diverse strategy to make sure that we're meeting people everywhere. That is Roderica Applewhite. She is director of Black Media for the White House. And we certainly appreciate you stopping by and, and talking with us this morning on WURD. Thanks, Solomon. It's a pleasure. Oh.